So this is the start border review for the 2018 Starboard Wide Point 810 in a Starlight construction. Starboard are definitely a brand that need very little introduction, a huge range of very good quality equipment that they have been making since 1994 and now in 2018 they have carried on making their innovation quality but added their future innovation quality which is where they are looking towards the environment every single step of the way. Starboard make five boards in their wide point range, all at 32 inches wide. The length of the boards, they start at 8.2, 8.10, which is this one, 9.5, 10.5, and 11.2. We've used 11.2 on other review last year, and it was a phenomenal board, definitely a bit more of a long board, drawn out sort of feeling. So we're looking forward to giving you the review of this 8.10. Specifications then, eight foot 10 long, 32 inches wide, as all the wide points are. This comes in at 4.3 inches thick, 140 liters in volume. When we weighed this board, it weighed 9.9 .9 kilograms and it retails at 1,199 pounds. Comes as standard with a two plus one fin setup, but also has the option of running in quads as well. The materials of this board, it's got a precision molded EPS foam core, which is the way they can reduce the waste of EPS foam that's made, wrapped in multiple layers of glass. There's a pine veneer under the deck area, and it's also finished off with a carbon and negra scratch resistant rails around the outside of the board. So moving away from the stuff you can find in the catalog and on the internet, let's go over our sub board impressions of the 810 wide point in a starlight construction. The look of the board, obviously it's a personal thing, but as far as we're concerned, the colors all go really well and definitely finishing it off with the blue carbon and negra rails really does finish off the board well. The EVA deck pad, as with a lot of the other starboards that we've tested, is very grippy and very comfortable underfoot. It's very nicely fitted off around the handle. The handle is all color coded, dark blue, the same color as the dark EVA deck pad. Moving back towards the tail, then you have your red kicker, which is a diamond gripped EVA, slightly different feel, which you can feel under your feet, which I personally really like when you are stepping back, obviously, if you're barefooted. Finished off at the back of the board, there is a nice raised EVA pad, which fits nicely under the back of your foot and a nice kicker that you can firmly get your foot against. One thing to notice with this board is there is no pressure valve with this board. Some boards come with pressure valves, some boards don't. It's all to do with the manufacturing process and what the manufacturers think if it needs a pressure valve or not. But that's great here, we've got nothing to worry about. So if we're flying or taking it abroad, we don't have to worry about putting it in and out and forgetting to put it in and filling our board up with water. As far as other fittings are concerned, it's pretty stripped back. There's no FCS mounts for GoPros and stuff, just a single leashing point at the back of the board there. The thing we really, really like about the look and the construction of this board has got to be these rails. Now we talked about it in our first look video, but after using it for a couple sessions, there is not a mark on these rails. And generally when we test stuff, we are pretty careful because we use paddling a lot of equipment, but at the same time, we have got to give it a little bashing to see what it does react to and actually how strong it is, definitely around the air rail area. This carbon in negra sort of fishnet material that's on the side here looks absolutely fantastic and it works so well. It really is a fantastic feature on all their Starlight boards and definitely when it comes to resale, if you ever want to sell a board like this, having something like that on your boards is going to make it so much easier to sell because it just still looks in good condition. So moving on to the shape, fin setup and performance of the 810 wide point. The outline shape of the board, you can clearly see the widest point is just up near, near the top of the deck pad area, which offers you a huge amount of stability, especially if you're paddling it in slightly choppier or not so forgiving waters. But then from the wide point back, it pulls itself into a nice pulled in square tail at the back of the board, which really does lend itself to being able to produce a nice smooth bottom turn and also redirect really well into the top turns and other maneuvers. Before we turn the board over and look at the bottom shape, let's talk about the rails. So this board is 4.3 inches thick. It's got a bit of thickness to it, but it's 140 liters. So it's a lot of volume in this sort of length board. The rails are thick, but to be honest, the way they perform on the water doesn't hinder them in the slightest. There is no bouncing or bogging of the rails. They work really well. And obviously the way they are shaped, they're relatively sharp at the back last two feet of the rails. That really does add to the bite on the wave face and it really does get you out of situations that some bigger boards really wouldn't want to be in. 
So turning the board over, looking at the bottom and look, talking about the rocker line, which is a curve of board to front and back. They have a small to moderate rocker line at the nose, coming back to a mid flat section to quite a nice healthy amount of tail kick at the back there, which really does help the board turn and come around on the steeper turns, especially in the tighter, more critical sections of the wave. The shape of the bottom across the board starts off with a single concave, quite far forward actually, right on the rocker line, even up here you've got a single concave, coming back, still drawn out single concave, still drawn out single concave, and then just about where the starboard sign starts to begin, you have a slight double concave, so you've got the center raising up here, so the water's being forced down the center, comes into this side, side sections of the board, and into the fins, then it's gonna add the stability when you're turning, and also when you're going from rail to rail, from left to right, left to right, the water has somewhere to go and it doesn't sort of get all confused, which is what the double concave is for. It finished off actually into a V, which is where they get rid of the double concave and they raise the center up even more, and that's gonna aid and help the turning of the board at the back there. Looking at the fin setup we've got, so this is a two plus one fin setup, which is where we have a bigger center fin and two smaller side fins. The side fins are your standard plastic FCS fitting boxes. They are a good profile and a nice shape and a good size. They are a little bit flexy. The center fin is a lovely shape and a lovely size fin. This is one of their new bio resins with the balsa wood core. Obviously balsa wood is one of the fastest growing woods in the world. Again, it just shows you that Starboard are thinking about what materials they put in every component of their board. 17 centimeter back fin or a 6.7 inch. Having the US box at the back gives you a large amount of options to slide the fin forward and back so you can trim it in that sweet spot. And also you have got the full five box in total. So you've also got the quad boxes so you can run it as a quad if you want to have a bit more of a locked in, faster sort of drivey board. Okay, performance wise, let's start with paddling out, getting over waves, catching waves. Obviously 32 wide is going to give you a nice amount of stability, but it isn't too much width that it slows you down so you're really hard to paddle. It's a nice cruising speed and it has a nice amount of glide when you're getting out over the waves and actually when you want to catch a wave. When it comes to paddling over wave, because it has a relatively thin nose, it does punch through the white water quite easy. And also because it's got a nice little bit of rocker, you can punch over the white water nice and easy. So really paddling out back isn't a problem at all. And again, when you're out in the choppier waters, because of that width, it really doesn't affect it. So you can, can paddle this board in quite a lot of very conditions to pretty choppy onshore to super, super clean. When you're paddling for the wave and paddling hard, you can trim your footwork right up towards the nose and you can keep paddling and the board will keep its general speed up. It isn't the fastest of board to paddle in because it is relatively short for its width and for the concave at the nose there. But it does paddle in well and it tracks very easy in a straight line. So it's the sort of board that you could get into paddle surfing with because it doesn't really catch you out and the rails don't bog down at the nose and you fall off. So it's a very easy board to catch a wave, but you are gonna have to paddle more effort into it than if you were riding a nine foot or a 10.5 or something. As for when you catch a wave and you drop down the face, I've been thinking of a few ways to describe this. But the best way to put this is, the board is completely happy in any position you put it in. Now for me to say that as a lighter guy being 75 kilos, so let's say this board is a little bit big for me. Maybe I'd be looking at the 8.2 if I was looking for a, a bigger floatier board. 75 kilograms for this board. If I ride a board of this size generally, it should be a bit bouncy a little bit heavy, a little bit hard for me to get my body weight over the rails and actually initiate the board into the bottom turn. It's nothing like that. It's very easy to surf. It's definitely one of the best bottom turning boards, oh, it's a rhymer, best bottom turning boards in the business of this size for my body weight. And, and off the top turn, because of the fin setup, it's very reactive. And I think Star would have put a quote in their, in their catalog produces speed down the line and control to fit in tighter pockets on a larger hollower waves. I'd absolutely agree with that. Okay, this isn't a super high performance board that you're gonna end up busting airs with, but it will do absolutely everything that a rider of this size and of an intermediate, even to advanced level, wants out of a board like this. It is completely happy getting into the faster hollower waves, as Starboard do say in their catalog. And it's also completely happy riding the mushier onshore waves as well. I think this is really due to the bottom shape that they've put in with the large single concave to double to V. That really does make a difference and it makes the board really smooth to ride, really fun on the bottom turn. I keep saying about the bottom turns, they're really good fun. And also off the top, 
because the tail is pulled in, you can still push this board around. This board is a big board, especially for me. I mean, it's 810 long, 32 wide, and it's 140 liters. There's a bit of thickness to those rails. But if, if a guy like myself of my body weight can get on that board, bury that rail and produce bottom turns that I'm happy with, then I really think this is a board that's gonna take you from that intermediate surfer to a really good level advanced surfer. So as you can probably tell, I'm a little bit blown away by the performance of this 810. I mean, it's still a relatively big board. I suppose if I can compare it to the 11.2 ride point, which we used last year, that was a lovely flowing board, way more long boardy, drawn out. The 810 is just a shorter, more performance base of that shape. And I suppose the 8.2, the smaller one, again, will be even more performance based, just a little less volume. So who do we think this board will best suit for? Well, you are gonna be able to get in sub surfing completely from zero on this, but it will really lend itself to the people who are my body weight and up. 75 to 95 kilos, but the dream, dream body weight, I think, if you are the 80 to 90, that would be your complete sweet spot. This 810 would be a really good board to look at. So to conclude, pros and cons and value for money. Well, pros, it's a spot on shape and there is nothing wrong with the shape in the slightest. The Enegra carbon rails are a complete winner. I'm also gonna bring value for money in because I cannot believe that you can get this quality board for 1,199 pounds. The cons, maybe it'd be nice to have a stiffer side bite sense set of fins. You might wanna upgrade those because I did feel sometimes on the bottom turn, the board was starting to give and I'm sure that was just to do with the fins flexing out. It's a minor one, but for the price, as I just said, 1,199 pounds, it is a lot of good quality brand and good quality board for your money. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed that Supboarder review, or if you wanna find out what boards we compare this to, check out Supboarder Pro. But until then, keep an eye on YouTube, check out Supboarder, and we'll see you next time.